In this video, you're going to learn how to install MongoDB on your machine. That's going to allow you to start up the server locally and actually connect it to the database from Node.js so you can read and write data. Now this video is for Windows users only. If you're on Mac or Linux, the last video was the installation video for you. This one is just for my Windows users. If you're still watching, I am going to assume you're running on Windows. To actually kick the process off, what we're going to do is head up to this link at the top right hand corner of mongodb.com. This is the get mongodb page where we can download what we need. In this case, from these three options, we want to download a server so we can get mongodb up and running locally. Now there are two options from here. We have the mongodb community server and we have their enterprise server. We'll be using the community server, which is completely free, and that's going to allow us to use MongoDB locally on our machines. Now, there are three options here, the version, the operating system, and the package type. You want to pick the most recent version of MongoDB available, the current release, even if it's greater than what you're seeing here for me, which is 4.0.4. That's because I update the videos to support the latest version, so make sure to grab that current release. Next up, the OS. It should have automatically detected your Windows operating system. Inside of this dropdown, there are other OSs for Linux and for Mac. Here we do indeed want Windows. And then down below, we have our package type, and we're going to go ahead and grab the zip archive, which we'll be able to use to actually get MongoDB up and running. Now you'll notice that there is no 32-bit version available, but you can grab an older version of MongoDB in 32-bit if that's the operating system you're running on. So for 64-bit users, you have these options configured and you click the download button that's going to grab the zip we need. If you're running on Windows 32-bit, you can head over to the following URL. That is mongodb.org forward slash dl forward slash win32 forward slash i386. When you visit this, you're going to be greeted with a very ugly page that contains the 32-bit versions available with the most recent releases up top and the older releases down below. You want to go to the very top and you'll see two versions available for each, the MSI and the zip. You want to grab the zip that's going to be what you need to install for 32-bit Windows. So take some time to grab the correct zip for you, and once it's done, we're going to go ahead and extract the contents of that archive. So right here, from the Downloads folder, we can move into the archive, we can click Extract, and we can extract everything. Now, where do I want to put the extracted files? I'm going to put them right in the Downloads directory, so right here in my users folder forward slash downloads. I'm going to extract them. And right here, it's moving through the extraction process. Now, one of the things included in here is an executable that's going to allow us to start the server up. It also comes with a bunch of other executables for doing other interesting things. So at this point, we have two things in the downloads folder. I have the old archive and I have a folder. When I open that folder, I should see the following. In there, I have the bin directory. So this is the folder that we're going to need to use because in there we have executables for doing things like starting our server up. Now we don't want to leave this folder in the downloads directory. We want to move it to a more permanent place on our machine. Before we do, let's go ahead and rename this folder. Right here, I'm going to rename it from its current long name to something a bit simpler. MongoDB. Perfect. Now that we have this in place, let's go ahead and take this folder to a more permanent location. What I'm going to do is put this on the user directory for my user profile. So down below, I have this PC. In there, I have all sorts of files and folders. We're going to scroll down past that to local disk. Right here, we're cracking that open. In there, I have users. In there, I have my user, which is Andrew, and that's where we're going to move this MongoDB directory. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to move it over to that folder. Now, if I crack open the user directory, I can see that MongoDB is indeed listed right inside of here. Now, this contains what's needed to manage the server. 
we also need to create a place to put the data that the database stores. We're going to do this by creating a new folder right alongside of this one. So I'm going to create a new directory. I'm going to call this Mongo DB hyphen data. That's going to sit right alongside of the Mongo DB folder. And that's where we're going to store the data for the database. With this in place, we're now ready to actually start up the database from the terminal. We're going to do that by using Visual Studio Code's terminal right over here. We have PowerShell running. I'm going to start by using clear to clear the terminal output. And the next thing we need to do is run one of the executables in that bin directory. To get started, we need to navigate to the executable that is going to be for me forward slash users forward slash my username in this case, Andrew, you can swap it out with yours. Notice we're just starting with the path that we're seeing right here. Then we're going to go into the folder we created and put in that directory, which we had called MongoDB. In there, we have that bin folder and in there we have MongoD.exe. MongoD is the executable we're going to use to start up the server. Next up, we're going to provide the hyphen hyphen DB path argument, which allows us to provide the path to the folder where the data should be stored. And we just created one for that. That's forward slash users forward slash for me, Andrew forward slash MongoDB hyphen data. Now, if you chose to put these folders in different locations or you named them something else, you're going to have to adjust your commands accordingly. Right here though, if I go ahead and hit enter, it's going to actually start up the server for the very first time. Now we get a ton of output showing up. The important thing though comes maybe five lines before the end. Right here we have the following message waiting for connections on port 27017. This is MongoDB's default port. And by seeing this message, it means that your server is up and running and it's waiting for connections. For example, connections from Node.js to read and write data. Now, if we navigate back over to the file explorer and open up that folder we created, MongoDB data, you'll notice there's actually a lot of stuff inside of there. Now, this is all just boilerplate needed to get started. None of it actually contains documents since we haven't created any just yet. But as we move through this section and we start the process of adding documents to our collections and storing those in our database, all of that data is going to live inside of this directory. So for the near future, you're just going to leave this command up and running. We can create multiple terminal tabs when we want to do other things like run our Node.js applications, but it is important to leave this running for as long as you want your database up and running, which for us is going to be for a while. All right. So that's where we're going to stop for this video. We have MongoDB running on our machine, which is a great start. In the next video, you're actually going to connect to your database from Node.js. That's what's going to allow us to start the process of reading and writing data. I'm excited to get to that. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the next one.